Hey, beautiful creatives. Welcome to Life by Design, the podcast. Thanks for joining me, your host, Nikki Tragos. I'm an artist, letterer, instructor, and creative business owner. I started and built Life by Design from home while raising a family and learning how to juggle it all. This podcast is my way of pulling back the curtain and inviting you to step into my home studio so we can get candid about all things art, business, and life so I can help you create a life that you design. So I was thinking about how I was going to start this week's podcast episode and thought it might be fun with sharing with you what's on my desk and easel this week. So I've had a few commissions come in these last few months and I'm really soaking up all the painting and even the planning that goes along with these big pieces. I've had all my acrylic paints out and my big brushes and really am enjoying painting bigger pieces again. It's not something that I get to do often, and I haven't realized how much I've been missing it until this last piece. For years, I participated in a group art exhibition that we'd plan once a year. It was always a fun social time where I got together with a close group of artists, and along with all the art prep, there was always time for social get-togethers to plan the show and to discuss art. Since COVID, though, we have had zero shows planned, unfortunately. We're not prepping pieces to exhibit and sell, so the big brushes and canvases have all been put away for a while. There's just really something special about using your whole arm to make large brush strokes and creating movement in a piece. It's really cool. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Put it on your bucket list so you can experience painting a large piece and really get into that full body movement that it requires to paint large. Who knows, maybe one day I'll have a large open studio and can teach a painting workshop where we can get messy and paint huge pieces and be social and doesn't that sound good? Okay, I'm gonna put it out there and let's see what the universe does with it. So I also have some collaborations that are happening this week. So last week I shared the fifth annual art bundle for good that's happening now until tomorrow. It's really cool. There are over 75 artists. We've all contributed over a hundred art courses and the money there's, I think 25% goes to um, a good cause. It's courageous kitchen. It's a Bangkok based charity helping refugees. So if you're curious about that, go ahead and grab your bundle. Uh, You can reach the link through my website, lifeidesign.com. And today's actually the last day. So if you're listening to this episode, when it comes out, you are good to go. There's still time to get in on that. I'm also teaching live painting workshops with the culture trip this month, which is really cool. We'll be working on some abstract florals using acrylics if you haven't played with those. And um, even one month we'll be doing a playful abstract. They're kind of like graffiti inspired. Very cool. So I have lots of paint around me. I have my acrylics out. There's lots of color happening right now. There, my water bottles are even covered in paint. It's actually quite funny. So all of these things make my spirit really happy. And physically, I feel it energizes me, which really brings me to this week's episode. So this week, I'm talking all about being in alignment with your creative calling. Because if you're not doing what you love, you really aren't doing what you're meant to be doing. Okay, so I have to warn you, this episode may get a little woo-woo, but sharing my take on art and life is really what this podcast is all about, isn't it? Let's dive in. So a few weeks ago, I made a really huge decision. I decided to retire all of my calligraphy classes on Life I Design Online. Yep, so at the end of the year, I'm really moving away from calligraphy and lettering and it's kind of scary because it's what I've been known for for years and years and it's kind of like changing my identity. It's moving away from some of what my followers and subscribers really know me for and look to me for but it doesn't mean that calligraphy won't be a part of my practice. It just means that I'm being pulled to follow my passion and my calling to paint and to teach actually. I never really planned on teaching or instructing others how to paint and letter or follow their artistic side or start their own home-based business, but I feel like I've just been pulled in that direction over the last few years or so, and so I'm just going with it, and it's been something that I'm really enjoying. It feels good. It feels really good, so again, something feels good. I just follow it, but when I think about painting and spending time on painting, really, that is a dream to me. 
I feel excited to sit down to a fresh canvas or to a blank watercolor sheet or a nude birch board even. Just laying out the color palette and planning what colors I'm going to use makes me really happy. These are all signs. They're signs that reinforce that I am doing what I'm meant to be doing and that art and creativity are all in alignment with who I truly am. Now, if you've listened to episode one of this podcast where I share my story, I share how for years I was out of alignment. I was lost in university. I was working in real estate, making a living, but I was always finding ways to try to express that creative side without even really realizing it. It's not until I look back that I see what I did and the actions that I took to make sure that I was still really expressing my creative side because I always wanted to be an artist. I always wanted to spend my time painting and drawing. These were things that I just imagined myself spending my time on, but it wasn't in my immediate reality. The funny thing is, I did find ways to connect with my creative calling, and those things did fill my creative need. So making the decision to retire my calligraphy classes meant making space for me to follow my calling and to paint more and to design more. I can't do it all, even though I try and I put unnecessary pressure on myself to try to do it all. I don't know, can you relate to that? I need to learn how to turn off that monkey brain a little bit more and say no to at least some of the ideas swirling around in my brain. Anyway, as soon as I made the decision to pull away from calligraphy and lettering and follow painting more, I felt lighter. Like I felt more relaxed and excited and energized. Even my body physically relaxed. I know this is how I pay attention to my intuition. I know that when I'm in alignment with my calling, I feel just everything loosens. I know it sounds woo-woo, but it's something I do. I teach my kids to do it, and it's what I'm encouraging you to do with this episode, okay? So when I'm chatting with the kids about decisions they have to make, or if I'm planning something new for my business, or looking just for a bit of direction for my next move, I do the same thing. I stop, I think about the decision ahead of me, and I really try to visualize what it is that is on my mind, okay? So I get a clear picture of it, and then I just tune in. I tune into how it makes me feel. I think about um, where my body feels any tension or do I feel a sense of lightness? So for me, I feel that tension in my solar plexus or my stomach. That for me is a strong no. So if I'm feeling that tension in my stomach or that uneasiness, first of all, I have to think about whether or not it's just fear of doing something new. But for the most part, I can really tell if I'm excited about it and if it's a good move for me. Okay, so if I have that, that just tightness in my stomach or solar plexus, I know that's a strong no signal. But if I think about what it is that I want to do, and there's a lightness in my chest, for example, that for me is a strong yes signal. So it can be different for you, but I want you to give it a try. Okay, doing this takes a bit of practice because you kind of have to get out of your head and let your intuition guide you. When you do this, you really start to live in alignment more. And that just means that you're doing things that you're meant to do. So when you have natural talents or natural interests or an instinctive pull towards something, this is where this comes in really handy. Okay. I'm going to give you an example. When I was a makeup artist, I worked with a number of people who had really serious day jobs, but in the evenings and weekends, we'd work together. They'd be following their true passion during their free time. I worked with a photographer who was a professional chartered accountant by day, and he was this amazing, crazy, creative, talented photographer in the evenings and weekends. So I worked corporate real estate by day, and I did makeup in the evenings and weekends, but no one, seriously, no one at my day job knew I was a makeup artist. I'd die, actually, at that time if they knew. But the beauty about these two examples is that we were just following our true passion, doing what we were meant to be doing, and we were just being in alignment with that creative calling. So don't get me wrong. I'm not encouraging you to leave your full-time job to take up your passion for pottery or painting or photography, although I totally would encourage you working towards that goal maybe. What I'm hoping you'll do is that you'll spend some time with yourself asking yourself what your true passions are, and then get aligned with them so you can experience the ease and the flow that happens naturally when you do. 
So when you can align yourself with your true passion, you will find more joy. You will be pulled naturally towards that passion. Opportunities will open up. Experiences will come to you. You can explore that passion, develop develop it more, and just spend more time doing what you love. Doesn't that sound amazing? In a world where there's lots of heaviness, there's lots of seriousness, I think we need to find ways to be lighter and invite that energy of lightness in more. Don't you think? I'm going to share with you another story. My husband has always been in the corporate world. He has traveled a lot for work and he has had very demanding roles. He's been home these last few months and he is in between jobs right now. So having this free time for him is really truly a novelty. It's something that I feel like he's just now really starting to enjoy. Do you know what? I'm going to tell you something. We are big foodies in our house. I do, I do share a little bit on my Instagram. If you follow me, you'll see some food that we create, but we cook a lot. We love a variety of food. We, while we're eating, we talk about the next meal we're going to have. Like that's how bad it is. Seriously. So since my husband has been home, he's invested in a smoker. So he's learned to smoke a variety of meat and fish. And it's been really fun for him. Actually, he's exploring baking. And he specifically is working on learning to bake breads and bread like desserts like babkas. If you haven't tried a babka, oh my God, they're heavenly. He's cooking more and he's even become more passionate about all the things that he's learned about and the food that he's making and just the joy that he gets from feeding us and seeing our reactions to everything he's creating. My jeans aren't feeling the joy. They're actually really tight right now, but my taste buds and my belly are quite happy. So I'm not stopping him anytime soon. He actually just got this portable pizza oven. I'll have to update you on how that's going in another episode. It's crazy. But back to the theme of this episode. So my husband is exploring his love for food. He's exploring cooking and baking, and he's moving closer towards something he loves and is in alignment with or what he is passionate about. So he's in business and technology and really loves what he does. And he's driven by his work and he's really good at it. And that's being in alignment too. But food also and making food, it's really becoming a love language for him. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't mean that he has to be a baker or a chef for a living, but the more time he spends on exploring food and baking and cooking and even these gadgets, the more in alignment he is with himself And that charges other areas of his life. Okay, just think about that for a second. All of that positive energy that you're spending on your passion, it will overflow. If you if you haven't experienced that, I'm excited for you to try. Okay. Now I can't give you that exact formula about how to find your true calling so that you can be in alignment with who you're meant to be and what you're meant to be doing. But I'm going to give you some things that I encourage you to think about. Okay, that might help you get to that space. I'm about to list some questions to ask yourself that I think are really important and deserve some space and maybe even quiet time for you to think about them. So at this point, if you can grab a journal, grab a pen and take some notes, unless you're driving, then keep driving, keep listening, but don't be distracted. Okay. (laughs) Okay. How do you know you're in alignment with your creative calling? Think about what you are good at or what you like to be spending your time on, or what you are daydreaming about doing when you're not doing something you love. Okay. Just think about that for a second. I want you to hold that in your mind and imagine it. And I want you to think about how much joy it brings you. I want you to think about the joy. So the joy feels good. It should feel light and happy. It should make you feel excited. Okay. Now imagine that, what that activity that you're doing for me, it's painting. I could be painting. I could spend all my time painting. Now think about what you're imagining. Does it feed your curiosity? Does it make you want to learn more? I know when my husband was researching pizza ovens, he was researching and learning and absorbing everything he could because he really wanted to experience it. It was just a passion of his. So does it feed your curiosity? Do you want to explore more? Do you want to understand it better? Okay, those are really good things to think about. Next, I want you to think about if you're following your heart or if you're following your head, okay? So for example, 
Are you working evenings and weekends on your creative calling because you just have to express that side of you no matter what? Then that means you're following your heart. Okay. And that's, that's the energy where you should be in. Is it bringing you joy? I'm asking you again, because man, if you can do something that brings you joy more often than not, that energy is going to trickle down to everything and everyone around you. Okay. So does it bring you joy? When you think about it, when you're doing it, even just the thought of it, it should. So now I want you to use your intuition and let your body feed you the answers. Okay. So forget about your head. Don't let yourself get into logistics and out of creative alignment. Okay. So I'm someone who has a very strong masculine side, getting out of my head and stepping into my heart is something that I've been working on and have to work on constantly. Okay. So I don't want you to think about, yeah, but I don't know how, and I don't know, you know, all of the the steps. I don't care about all of that. I just want you to imagine doing something that you truly love. Okay. Now, the last thing that I want you to think about is does your passion or that creative calling, does it make you excited as you think about it? And do you think about future you and how you'll be exploring it next? Okay. So maybe you're trying to do watercolor painting and that's something you want to work on next, or you want to work on some art journaling or even writing a short story. Maybe you want to learn about photography So are you excited for the future and you're thinking ahead to when you're actually doing photo shoots and maybe you're working with families and you're capturing their family and providing them with memories? Does that make you really excited? Are you thinking about those moments where you're delivering them their photographs and they are so grateful because they're looking at these photos and it represents their family and it gives them a beautiful memory? Okay, are you thinking about the future? If you are, then you are slowly coming into alignment with who you're meant to be. If you've been in your body and paying attention to how you feel, I hope you're buzzing right now with some positive, excited energy. I know this episode has been a little woo-woo, but this is really where you start to understand ultimately what makes you happy and who couldn't use a little bit more happy right now. I know I sure still could. So that's it for number 10. Episode number 10, I can't believe it. I suggest you maybe give yourself a bit of time to think about what I shared in this episode and then maybe come back, have another listen, dive into your passions and interests a bit more and see where it takes you. Pull out your journal, play around with it, play around with the feeling and the ideas and the possibilities and what makes you most excited and most happy. What brings you joy? If you've had some aha moments listening to this episode, please share it with me. That way, I will get a better idea of what you'd like me to chat more about on this podcast. Deal? Okay. Take a snapshot of the episode while you're listening. Post it on your Instagram feed or story. Tag me at lifeidesign underscore the podcast or even lifeidesign. Let me know what spoke to you. And as always, if you're enjoying these episodes, please go ahead and rate it on Apple iTunes. It just helps other people find the podcast so we can help them hopefully find their true calling and get them more aligned with who they are. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a lot. Thanks for being in the moment of my little woo woo session. (laughs) And I will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.